Hello, I'm Svetlana. I'm Marcel. My name is Zota. And, and together, together we, we build the budget up. So the idea behind this application is to create a user-friendly app that people can use so that they can record their grocery expenses in a quick and easy way and then the application would perform certain analysis of their spendings and as the outcome the users will be presented with some sort of visual graphs and statistics showing them how and what for they spend their money when they went grocery shopping. So the main functionality of the application is to track expenses, as we mentioned before. So the focus at this point of time is only on grocery shopping. So the products uh, that users buy in the shops will be placed into categories. For example, cucumber is a vegetable, apple is a fruit. And the expenses will be summarized and presented to the users based on these categories so that they can see the meaningful statistics. So let's have a look at the project architecture. On the left hand side we have our phone applications which would be their Android or iPhone users or any other mobile device for that matter and that communicates with our cloud load balancer. The cloud load balancer manages our high availability cluster and the docker containers. The docker containers themselves can communicate with the cloud SQL which is our failover replica and our high availability and manages all our data. Finally, on, we also have a Spark cluster, which we use for our machine learning and our aggregation of data, which is also a set of Docker containers, which allows us to use our distributed computing. For the data storage, in our project we decided to use MySQL database. It was deployed on the MySQL server, which has high availability and fall over replica. The rationale for us choosing to use MySQL database was basically the fact that the data associated with our application are well structured and we felt familiar and comfortable with this technology. So the database consists of several tables, several relations. In our project it's mainly used to store the data. The processing uh, associated with data manipulation is done using Spark in memory. We also manage user sessions uh, through the database. Let's talk about how we get our source code for our application into Google Cloud using a technology called, called Fusion, which ends up being deployed on Tomcat and runs in a Java virtual machine. To get this code into our Docker container, we're actually going to build a complete container including our source code. And the way that looks is we need to package all our source code up into a tar archive then we will build our container using our docker file then we need to tag our docker container that we've built using a special syntax required by google and the syntax lets google know in which location to put the docker file and then finally we push it up to google let's run that script now and then we'll have a look how that looks like inside the google console So that's running now and what we can see is some of the layers already exist inside Google so there's no need to push them up again and when that's finished or this container will be inside the Google Cloud repository for Docker containers and it's done. Okay so now we've uploaded our Google container to the Google Cloud platform and let's see what that looks like inside the Google console. So if I navigate to the container registry I can see that I've got my Docker container here and if I click on that, I can see all the different versions of that Docker container that have uploaded in development and latest marks the latest release of our software. The reason we did this is because we wanted to be able to scale our application up and down dynamically depending on how much users we have to always give the users a great experience, but also then to save money because there's no need to have lots of servers running when there's not many users. So the way we achieve this is by using the Google load balancing platform. So let's have a look how the load balancing has been implemented. Um, to do that, I will go to the load balancing section within the Google Cloud platform. And I've set up a budget load balancer. The reason we use the load balancer is to always make sure that there's enough computing resources available to give our users a good experience. So as the number of users increases and the load on the application increases, the, the load balancer 
will automatically launch more Docker containers to always make sure that there is enough resources available to serve our customers. On the other hand, if there's not much usage of the site, we don't want to pay all this extra money for resources we don't use, and then the load balance will automatically scale back the application um, so that we don't waste any money. So what I can see here on the load balancing page is that we've set it to target the load balancing capacity to be at 80%. Um, with a balancing mode of 80% maximum CPU. So as soon as we hit these thresholds, the load balance will automatically start adding more instances into our cluster. So a Google load balancer always manages something called an instance group. So an instance group is always based on an instance template. So if I jump into the instance template here, I can see that the template is configured for a G1 small compute instance with 1.7 gigabytes of memory. And when it launches, it'll use this container image right here. And that's the container image we uploaded previously into the um, container repository. So every time this particular group needs more resources, it'll use this template to create new instances. You can see we've got two instances running, and Google is going to worry about um, making sure that template gets deployed correctly. We used Spark in our project for in-memory processing. There were a couple of basic reasons why we decided to do that. First is to avoid overloading of MySQL server. And the second reason was to speed up data computation by distributing data processing. So the preparation included starting one Spark master and two slaves and installing the GDBC connector. After that, we uploaded data from the required MySQL tables. The data was converted. Uh, based on that data, we created the data frames. Then we performed various operations like group by aggregation and some simple computations on those data frames and recorded the results back into the MySQL database. The purpose of the, we used the machine learning to find uh, is there any similarity in behavior in a certain condition. We use temperature and cost to see if we, whether we can find any clusters. We use the machine learning library, which is uh, the Apache Spark uh, Scalable Machine Learning uh, Library. It provides very high performance, high quality algorithms. It's um, more than 100 times faster than MapReduce. We use k-means clustering in our project. The pro first part of the program loads the data uh, from a CSV file. The next part is the k-means clustering itself. And then the next part is the evaluation of the clustering. The last part is just write out the, the file into a CSV file to the distributed file system. So let's look at the application itself. So we've used Google sign-in so we don't have to do any of the user management and that's all handled for us by Google. As you can see, I've logged in straight away with my Google account. I'm showing all the receipts that I've logged so far in the application. After I finish my shop, um, I would go to log a new receipt by clicking on log receipt. And I can have an overview of all the products that I tend to purchase. So I'll click on my products and that shows me all the products I've added so far to the application. If I want to add a new product, Let's say I like Twix, and the category I'm going to put that into is for breakfast. And if I add that product, I can see that the product's been added to my list of products. If I then go to log the receipt, I can say today is the 10th of October. I'm now at Coles. The temperature outside is a lovely 22.6 degrees. I'll add the line items for my shop. So I've got my Twix candy, which I just added. I've bought two of them and they cost me $2.50 each. And I can see that the product's been added to my receipt. Then I add the next one. Maybe I was a little bit healthy today. And, and that's my shop completed. If I go to save the receipt, I can now see that's been added um, to my shop. And if I look at my spending, I can see where I've spent most of my money uh, for the month. What's also interesting to note, the way the application works, it's been divided into a client side and a server side, and it communicates via a REST API. On the server side, we've got a Tomcat server running, uh, serving our REST API, and the front end application is basically just HTML code, JavaScript, and images. 
And the reason we did that is it allows us to, to do some really nice caching and we could even put the application into a statically hosted uh, platform to save some costs and it also reduces the load on our Tomcat service if we wanted to do that. And you can see here in the console that if I refresh the page that I have this REST API request here to our backend server. It returns us just our data as a JSON file and then we use JavaScript to display that graph there. And that's how the whole application works.